You're listening to episode 22 of Leaders on Purpose podcast. Hi there. Welcome to Leaders on Purpose podcast. This is your host, Manal Bernoussi. I am a multi-passionate mom of twins and a corporate executive in Casablanca, Morocco, living and sharing my personal development journey. In this podcast, we're looking to develop the skills, habits, and mindset to reveal our full potential for a greater purpose. I'll be inviting inspiring people, beautiful souls, Moroccans, Canadians, Americans, Nigerians, and more, people from all backgrounds and different nationalities to inspire us to live our true purpose and create great impact. So join me every other Sunday and let's make this happen. Hey everyone and welcome back to a new solo episode of Leaders on Purpose podcast. I'm your host Manel Bernoussi and if you have not yet done so hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any upcoming episode and you probably heard me ask you to do this before but if you love this podcast please do me a favor give it a rating and a review while you're listening to this. Pull out your phone right now it takes just a few seconds. The reason why is that the more positive ratings and reviews that we get the more that the platform shows this podcast to people who have never listened to it before. So that way this podcast can be listened to and impact people who have never heard about it. So that would be a great way for you to pay it forward and I would really greatly appreciate it if you would do that for me. So today we'll be talking about how our fear alters our level of consciousness. We'll be looking to understand what's really going on and how to deal with our fears especially when confronted with a crisis. You know, I, I was reflecting the other day because I was involved in a situation. Now, obviously, I won't go into any specifics. There's no point in doing that. But let's say in a stressful environment, one person was called out on something by someone else. But instead of owning what truly happened, that person denied the whole situation and took me down also in the process of doing that. Now, from my perspective, I had two choices. Either going in a reactive mode to clear my name or taking a step back in hopes of seeing the bigger picture, which I did. And to be honest, I felt good about myself for doing that. These are the moments when I acknowledge that being on a self-development journey, developing my level of consciousness is actually making me a better person. Because instead of playing the blame and shame game, I really saw myself in that person. That person was me and I was that person. So there was no point in, in lashing out, really. I just saw clearly how fear, fear of judgment, fear of not being enough, fear of losing face, fear of so many things, actually, completely alters our level of consciousness. Now, you could say, but it's not fair. If what that person said was not true, you need to stand up for yourself. Well, the way I see it really is that not all battles are worth the fight. I was not letting myself down. I was consciously and deliberately making the decision that it was not worth the fight. And I was doing that from a place of complete awareness. How many of you can relate to this? How many of you behave in a certain way in a stressful or challenging situation? And then you look back and you're like, why did I even say that? I don't want to be that type of person. What the heck was wrong with me? Well, chances are, if we dig a little bit deeper, that the underlying reason was fear and that you were not your true self at that moment. You were somewhat unconscious. So that just got me thinking. And I did what I do for most of my solo episodes. I started reading and researching and listening and journaling to understand, unpack and articulate my thoughts. And while I was doing that, I came across something that Eckhart Tolle said that really stuck with me. He said, intelligent action cannot occur when gripped by anxiety and negative thinking. Efficient and intelligent action does not arise out of fear. 
Whether we're talking about a professional decision or a personal one, no matter if we're talking about a decision that we need to take individually or as a collective, if the action that we take arises out of fear, it's unlikely that it will be effective. Because what is missing then is wisdom. What is needed is wisdom. Looking at the totality of the situation, not just one aspect of the problem. We must free ourselves from the negative thinking that accompanies fear and align ourselves with what he calls the vertical dimension. And I really think that is the key. The most important thing is our state of consciousness when that challenging situation arises. Our connection to the vertical dimension, as he calls it, that is what truly determines the kind of action we take, if it's intelligent or stupid. In other words, it's our level of awareness, our inner energy field. We can feel if our internal energy field is calm and connected to the vertical dimension, or if we're cut off and our inner energy is not right when it's driven by ego. Ego meaning complete identification with the mind, when we're identifying ourselves with our thoughts, which is completely irrelevant when we think about it, because thoughts are fleeting, right? They, they come and go. So ego sometimes may look good at the beginning. It may have good intentions. It may say to you, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to handle this situation. But if we disregard our underlying consciousness, then we find that the famous proverb applies. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. There were so many people in the world with good intentions that created disasters because they disregarded their consciousness. I touched on this topic of intention in episode 18, The Power of Intention, which I'll link for you in the notes of this episode if you haven't listened to it yet. So fear is not a proper motivator. And if you're using fear, either with your team or your kids or your spouse or even yourself, you might want to reconsider. There's a beautiful quote from Michelle Obama that says, don't ever make decisions based on fear. Make decisions based on hope and possibility. Make decisions on what should happen, not what shouldn't. If you think about how we want our kids to be raised as role models, if we are the adults in the room and the leaders in the room, and we're not showing that level of decency, we cannot expect our children to do the same. So that's what I think about. I think about the gesture, the symbols of our actions, and what our words mean and their impact. Now the question is, why do we choose to react when we know better? Is being exhausted or stressed an excuse for making poor choices? Well, when we are in the process of awakening, I believe we have experiences, periods when we are very unawakened, we revert back into reactivity and ego, and then we're back again in more awakened states. And when we are in that awakened state, we look back on something that perhaps we did the other day when we were unawakened and we go, why did I act out? Why did I get so angry? And this happens repeatedly again and again. So again, if we know all of this, why do we still choose to be reactive, right? Well, what I found out in the way Eckhart Tolle puts light on this is that we do not choose to react. And we know better only afterwards. So in that moment, we have no choice because we are run by the conditioned mind with its conditioned patterns. We're trapped in ego. So we have no choice. The choice comes only when we are aware. So that choice happens only if we're interacting with somebody and we feel the impulse. And in that moment, we choose to react or we choose to let it go. Now, is being exhausted an excuse for making a poor choice? When we're beginning to awaken, we often find that when we're low energy, our consciousness is also low. When we're tired or we had a long day and our kiddos do something and we react, we just don't have the energy to be conscious or bring in that awareness. We're just exhausted, right? Well, I guess 
time comes when we begin to realize that and then even when we are exhausted, we can still know that we're exhausted without it making us unconscious. So it's not that we want to react and be bad, but it's the ego that wants to react. And being bad is not bad either for the ego. Trouble is good. To have an argument with someone is great for the ego. To try to prove somebody wrong is great. Ego loves that. It needs to be right. It needs an enemy some somewhere. Please give me an enemy. Because if I don't have an enemy, I do not know who I am anymore. Ego defines itself through the others. There's me and there's the others. So it's not that we want to react or to be bad. We're not even there at that moment. We're asleep in that moment. Spiritually speaking, we're asleep. We're unconscious. The moment we become conscious again, we look back and go, oh, I did it again. Well, we didn't do it. It happened to us. And it's not a way of not owning our actions. It's really understanding the difference between ego and the self And also understanding that we have to suffer the consequences. So the true work, the only work actually in our life, is going from unconsciousness to more consciousness again and again until it becomes our true nature. And the beauty of life is that through suffering, there is an opportunity of awakening. So we could say that the ego, the very unconscious ego, ultimately becomes the instrument of awakening because we start to notice patterns and eventually we choose to break those patterns that bring so much suffering. It may be certain situations that we go into in our daily life that we know are more likely to trigger our unconscious reactivity. It could be a person that we go visit and this person always makes us unconscious. It could be someone we work with Or it could be somebody that we've known for a very long time. Whoever that may be, maybe whenever you visit, the same script is playing out. This person accuses you of not being good enough or whatever they do. And you react and you storm out or you shout. Or maybe it's before having contact with your ex-spouse. For some reason, you need to still be in contact and you know you will be triggered. And then instead of just going into that situation, maybe use it as a spiritual practice to see if you can still stay present while you're talking to them. Trying to really feel the entire body and be present as much as we can. Because often people with whom we have a lot of history, often they are the people that trigger us the most. Another situation is when you find yourself with family members or co-workers and it is obvious there are strong differences of opinion. That's a heated situation, right? The truth is, it's only a problem when people are identified with their opinion. What is an opinion? It's a thought form. An unconscious person with lack of awareness derives their sense of self from thought and emotions. When we derive our identity from thought, we need to be right regardless of the truth. We drive our sense of self from opinion. Therefore, if anybody questions it or contradicts our thought, the other person is perceived as attacking us, as if we had been almost physically attacked. That's when we operate from our unconscious mind, when we are letting ego drive the dance. Because ego is complete identification with the mind. And so if we're having this heated conversation, what is our state of consciousness when we engage in this conversation with friends or coworkers or family members that we disagree with? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. Do we experience certain emotions? How do we interact with them when we have a discussion on this or that? Are we completely identified with our opinion? Do we become defensive or aggressive when we talk? Because if we do, then we become part of the unconsciousness that is in play. And for the unconsciousness to operate, it needs at least two. It needs two sides. If we don't offer any opposition to their viewpoint, then this conversation will quickly come to an end. 
So is it possible to have a conversation with completely opposite opinions without involving the ego? Yes, it is possible. We don't have to give up on our opinions. We can have our opinions on whatever subject, but what we have to give up as we awaken is our identification with our opinions. Deriving our sense of identity from our mental positions. That's the delusion. And as long as we do that, we're engaged in a very unpleasant discussion where we're not actually defending the truth, we're defending our fictitious sense of self. And the more we're defending our fictitious sense of self, the more unconscious we become, up to physical violence sometimes. What we are, we are the presence. It's much deeper than the opinion. We are not the thoughts. So that's for us to practice. Are we identifying with our mental positions or are we able to explain our mental positions without our egoic self involved in the process? So before I wrap up, I'd like to share with you three steps I personally use to navigate fear in challenging times. So number one, stop identifying with it. I am not stressed. I am not anxious. I am very mindful about any word I put after I am. I might be feeling stressed or feeling anxious, but I am not it. It might be a very small change in words, but it's a huge difference for the nervous system. Number two, breathing. It is so important. Long, deep breaths into the nose, out through the mouth. Exhales should be longer than the inhales. When the exhales are longer than the inhales, it actually slows the heart rate down. So, into the nose, out through the mouth. It seems simple, but breathing is the most effective way to change our state. Your breath will change your state. If I feel anxious or I feel stressed, I immediately go back to breath. Okay, so that was step number two. Number three, to become self-aware. Step number three is really to become self-aware. We talked about this. Whatever situation we are facing, we are in it. Accept it and breathe. Whatever tough situation, I'm like, okay, I just need to breathe through it. I don't have to react right away. This too shall pass. How about I shift fear into curiosity? What is really happening here? What script am I playing unconsciously? What is really going on with the other person? So shifting fear, anxiety, whatever that is to curiosity works really well when we are conscious enough to try it out. So that's what I've got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories and tag me on it. That's Manel Bernoussi, M-A-N-A-L-B-E-R-N-O-U-S-S-I. Thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate you and I wish you a wonderful day. That is it. Thank you so much for spending your most precious asset with me, which is your time. I am so grateful. If you like what you hear, please take a quick second to hit subscribe, write a review and share with a friend. Spread the love if you think it's something they could benefit from. That will make a huge difference to keep this podcast going. I make it my mission to bring you as much valuable content as possible and absolutely incredible guests. I am back every other Sunday. Thank you so much again for listening and I hope you have an amazing day.